Okay, I got a, a motor question, Volkswagen motor question. Uh, one of my uh, subscribers, they built their own uh, motor. I'm assuming it's a 1600. Uh, they probably watch some of my videos. And uh, sometimes I don't know if the videos help or hurt. And as the parts get shittier, I think uh, the videos are deceiving. So we're going to go over a few things here. This is a 1600, you know, the normal assembly time after you build all your components and get everything laid out should probably take you anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes to an hour. I build all my components in pieces. I'll assemble the crank and uh, put all the bearings on it, hang the rods so the crank's ready just to drop into the block. Uh, I'll build both my case halves, install my lifters, put my cam bearings in uh stuff like that now uh on this particular motor the uh customer you know you wanted to watch and that's not a problem with me i make the video so everybody can see them and lately i've been bitching about the parts you know and uh i ran into an issue with this motor and i have a, a subscriber that sent me an email and he's having a problem with the motor that he assembled and uh you might have the same problem that I had. Uh, and I'll give you a few things to check. Uh, I assembled this motor. The crank was assembled in the crank stand over there. Everything was fine. The clearance is good. We have uh, two and a half thousandths on our bearing clearance, two thousandths on the rods, two and a half thousandths on the mains. Uh, the crank's freshly turned. Uh, all those bearings were silver line bearings. Uh, the, the crank assembly went together really nice. Uh, when I installed the case house together, I noticed that it was a little tight. And uh, my motors are never tight. Usually they, uh, you know, they spin over real nice. And they should turn really freely. There should be no drag at all on a motor when you put it together. Uh, a lot of times an American car motor, you know your assembly is a lot bigger, but uh, when you install the crank and the block, it should, it should spin freely. Uh, if you're using a rope seal, you know you're gonna have some drag from the rope seal. That's why I always rec recommend a neoprene seal on the American car builds. But on this, uh, it wasn't the seal, it wasn't the crank. We knew the crank was good and uh, we used the same cam that was in this assembly before. So I didn't think that we would have a, a, a gear issue. Uh, the crank gear and the cam gear, sometimes uh, they can be not compatible. And uh, what I recommend to do is when you uh, have your case laying sideways before you put your uh, case halves together, rotate the crank and the cam together before you put the case halves. You know, you want that to turn over nicely and not spit the cam gear out of the crank gear. It should stay meshed and turn freely. And this one did that. The other thing that I preach is before you put your case halves together, I always tell people to, uh, well, I probably won't have one here now because I want, you know, the demonstration thing. The center main, you never put both center mains in. Always leave the, we'll use this for illustration purposes. This isn't a, Volkswagen center main bearing. I have one right here. Here we go. Here we go. You never want to install this in the second case half. You know, put your bearings in, of course, where you're going to lay your crank. Always leave your center main bearing out of the half that you're going to drop on. You should be able to drop the bearing over the crank before you put the case half. Drop it over the crank and the bearing shouldn't rock. It should be dead stable. If the bearing moves any at all, you need to check your dowel pins one more time. You know, your little dowels. You want to make sure that these dowel pins are uh, lined up. Here's one right here. Little dowel pins. They have to be lined up with that bearing. If you get it off to the side and it's not lined up perfect, it can smash your bearing and cause your crank to be uh, wedgemated in there. Uh, now what I recommend the center bearing, you know, you can't mess that up. It fits in the case one way. The trouble comes from the rear bearing, you know, trying to fit this dowel when you're uh, assembling the crank and the block, you know. This is on the back of the crank and you sort of got to spin it around. I always put these in the block first 
put a little magic marker mark right there where your dowel's at and then scribe the bearing at the case hasp when it's installed so you know when you uh, are rotating this putting it in the case that it's in the right position it sort of eliminates some of the guesswork you can do the same with the front bearing uh, and the front crank the little bearing here both these bearings you can mark them you know uh, if you build enough motors you know this is sort of flush with the case half this little round uh, dealy here there's your uh, tang or your uh, you know your hole your alignment hole same with the front one mark the sides try to mark it at the bottom so you can see the dowel pin location so assuming that your dowel pins are all correct and that you don't have a crank issue the way to check this let me get you on the stand here you can see the back of the motor here uh, what we want to be able to do is you know of course the flywheel is not on the motor and it shouldn't be at this point you should be able to uh, push the crank back and forth in the bearing tunnel uh, in the main tunnel you can see I'm pushing the crank back and forth with no resistance okay and uh, if you're doing that then your dowel pins aren't smashed and you don't have a crank bearing issue you know we know you're good there so the next issue this is what I found and uh, some of you guys will call bullshit on this and some of you guys will be like yeah I figured this out the hard way the Coleman Schmidt cam bearings are shit man you can't use them here's some brand new ones I uh, assembled this motor and it was tight tighter than I like and uh, I went ahead and assembled it uh, the customer left and you know I took it apart in my own time pulled the motor back apart and uh, what I found was it's cam bearings uh, they're brand new Colvin Smith uh, they're no longer steel back they're aluminum it's a good name so you don't assume that you're gonna have an issue with them they're in a blue box they have a nice little tray that they come in and uh, you might as well just use the used cam bearings that come out of your motor because you're going to be way ahead of the game. Uh, they were pinching the shit out of the cam. And the cam's new. Uh, like I said, it was in the motor before, but it had been replaced. So uh, I got some used bearings, put the cam bearings in there, and voila, no longer tight. So uh, you need to check those cam bearings. Of course, when you pull them out, they will be... Uh, They'll have tight spots, you know, you'll see little dark spots. Uh, these were pinching right in the thrust area. Uh, you can see it right here. The bearing's not symmetrical, not round. I don't know what the deal is, but you can see, see that scuff area right at the corner of the bearing. It was pinching the cam there, grabbing it, and the cam wasn't turning, you know, not very well at all. Now. Uh, you could start the motor and that'll probably break in but being that it's an aluminum bearing it could also stick to the cam and uh, cause havoc so I had to take this one back apart you know and uh, I just replaced a few of the bearings that were uh, grabbing shiny and uh, I'm sort of uh, really struggling this morning I'm, I, I got other stuff to do but I'm waiting on Cadrons for this motor and I think it's gonna come apart the third time because it still doesn't, although it spins nice, it's not spinning nice like I like them to spin nice. You know, the freer, the less friction you got at startup, the longer the motor life's gonna be. Uh, so these 30 minute videos of assembling engines are, you know, man, they're a thing of the past because the quality of the parts are just not allowing the assembly one time anymore. Uh, you know, I'm having to take this motor apart and put it back together. Volkswagen motors aren't really designed like that. You know, I guess uh, I'm going to have to start assembling the motor without sealer once. And then uh, I'll assemble it, torque everything, make sure everything rotates. Take the motor back apart and then put the sealer on is all I can recommend uh, with the parts that we're getting today. So the aluminum Coleman Smith cam bearings are... Uh, not very good quality you can see right there where it's grabbing the cam uh i had no uh my first problem was i had no end play on my uh camshaft you need a little bump in the cam uh the cam should have a little back and forth movement uh that's what i mean by bump and uh this one had none 
so my thrust was tight. Uh, I tried sanding this on a sheet of glass with some sandpaper, you know, uh, cutting the thrust down and uh, didn't work. You can see the thrust is very thin now and still uh, no go. And you can see the back of this bearing is getting pinched too. Not only is it pinching the camshaft, but it's pinching the case uh, not evenly. So I don't know if these aren't symmetrical, if they're not round or what the issue is, you know, uh, I don't know how they make them. But all I can tell you is if you're having a dragging issue and you can move your crank back and forth, you either have a camshaft to gear issue and you can determine that if you rotate the motor with the other case half off, the camshaft should rotate in the assembly turn. You know, you're going to have to have the case sideways and you're rotating the assembly. The cam shouldn't spit out of the crank gear. Uh, if that's good, then I would be looking at the cam bearings to be suspect. Because uh, that's what I found on this one. Ironically, you had that question and I ran into the same problem. So the main thing to check is to make sure your uh, crank moves back and forth. Very important. You know, you want float. It's got to have it. That's set with the uh, shims when we do our end play. There's our shims, you know. I usually start with 26. A lot of guys will set the end play and put all this together before they assemble the, uh, the motor. I don't do it that way. I set it on the floor. If you start with 26 thousandths, you can usually uh, be close. Uh, you want about four to five thousandths end play after you uh, put the flywheel on. Uh, I'll do a video on that. I got our flywheel down here. Got it back from the machine shop. Uh, the Land Auto Parts did an excellent job again. They did a Winona cut on that. They used the Winona stone and uh, they cut both surfaces, which is very important. On a Volkswagen, you know, you want to make sure that you cut the surface that the clutch disc is going to ride on and then also machine the surface where the pressure plate bolts. So you, uh, don't end up with an excessive gap and uh, that's a very important critical thing that needs to be done whatever you cut this you got to cut the deck so it's a two uh two cut process they only charge me 40 bucks to do that which i think is very reasonable and uh, they'll even do it cheaper if you take uh multiple down i usually take five of them down i didn't have five good ones so we dug this one up his was bad had come loose and uh, the other one had a bad starter ring on it. So, so I hope that helps you on the, uh, the tightness issue. Uh, you know, I wouldn't leave it like that because you're definitely, you have something that's pinched or dragging. The motor should rotate freely. And uh, you'll find your issue if you take it apart, you know, and look close. And uh, the only other suggestion I can, uh, give you if you want to narrow it down and make sure that it's a cam bearing issue is take the cam out of the motor assemble the case half back together bolt it down and uh, make sure your uh, crankshaft assembly rotates freely and if it does then you know you're either looking at a a mess issue with the gear the gears uh, they make a plus and a minus and a standard gear uh, so you can adjust that and that's what you're going to see if it's spitting the cam gear out of the crank gear when you're rotating the motor that's a cam gear issue. If uh, you're getting tight when you bolt the case halves together, that's more than likely going to be a cam bearing issue. It's also critical not to over torque these bolts. Uh, I know some people would like to tighten the case half bolts a little tighter, and uh, that can be problematic. Uh, 27 foot pounds on the big ones. Make sure you have your washers little ARP lube on there to get the proper torque is always a good idea and 18 foot pounds on the uh, 13 millimeter perimeter nuts now some of the guys will go and put the uh, 15 millimeter uh, head bolts out here for a little more clamping power I've seen that done before and uh, I don't really see a benefit from that and it can uh, change your torque of your case the pinch of the case can be affected by that so Obviously, when you put a bigger fastener on there, you have more clamping load at the same torque. So there's no reason to uh, over tighten that, especially if you put a bigger nut on it. So uh, those are the only things that I can uh, tell you. The other thing that can cause you uh, a little bit of drag 
is your oil pump assembly. A lot of times these pumps are uh, sort of a universal deal. You need to make sure that you have the correct pump for the camshaft that you're running. They have a dish cam and they have a flat cam, two different types of uh, camshafts. I think if you look at my uh, video from a couple days ago, we went over that a little bit. And uh, I always assemble the pump without the gasket into the case half. Put my gear in there and make sure it's not protruding out of the pump, you know, so when you bolt the cover on, it's not binding the gears up in there. Uh, sometimes you have to adjust the rod and the gear, and you can do that with a, a press. I don't know if I have an oil pump gear here. Probably don't, you know, never something when you need it. But uh, the oil pump gear that actually has the uh, shaft on it, you can actually press that shaft through the gear. So if you need to adjust the depth of the gear, you can just uh, put it in the press and uh, press the shaft where you need it. So that should cover everything that you could possibly have a, a binding issue, you know. Uh, sealer on the case house, you know, you never want to put sealer on the center mains of the case. I think you probably know that if you watch the videos, I don't ever do that, just the perimeter of the case not in the center mains and uh, check those things. I hope the video helps you out and uh, you know, uh, I'd start there and uh, no matter how much time you have in that motor, don't be afraid to take it back apart. You know, that's uh, one thing that you have to uh, have that mindset when you assemble engines, you know, you're the one that's assembling the motor, it's on you. You know, you have to be able to uh, take something apart even if you have a lot of time in it because if it's not right then uh it's not worth your time anyway so uh be sure to take it back apart check for those issues make sure you got the crank float make sure you got proper uh, cam mesh with the gears and uh check your bearings i would be suspect of those if you're using the malls uh, I also heard that there was some issue with the double thrust bearings. So if you're using those, same thing, you know, check the cam bearings, pull the cam out of the motor, reassemble it with no sealer, and see if it turns freely with just a crank in there. And uh, that'll narrow your uh, search down. So hope that helps. And uh, again, this is for my buddy out there in Texas. So uh, I hope you guys get it figured out. Don't get discouraged by it, you know. Uh, this is why you assemble your own engine. A lot of guys would just leave that. You have the ability to take it apart and make it right and know that your engine's correct when you put it together. So that's the whole idea behind uh, doing it yourself. And uh, you know, you always have to check everything, you know, just because you buy a new part or you have something machined somewhere today. I mean, it's, it's really necessary to check everything. Uh, you watch some of these guys that build the american car motors on here uh, they're uh, pretty meticulous they go through and they check all their machine work and a lot of times they'll find little little things and uh, the little things are what make a big difference in an engine uh, you know just something as simple as that drag from the start could uh, shorten your life of your motor quite a bit you know more than likely it will start up and run but uh you know for sure it's gonna do damage until that part's free or clear. And uh, with the construction of these new bearings, it's, it's, it's something that might not cure itself, you know, being that they're aluminum construction. Uh, 600 degrees, last time I checked, was the melting point for aluminum. So, you know, if you have something that's uh, a friction situation and uh, obviously there's no clearance if it's pinching the bearing like that, so you're not gonna get any oil at all in this area where my finger is at you know if it's shiny like that there won't be any oil there because there's no clearance uh you know you have to have film clearance for the oil to get into and if you don't have that you're going to have parts failure because this is going to be metal to metal contact so i know it's hard for a lot of guys to believe that everything in the motor rides on a film of oil but uh in theory that's how it's supposed to work you know we're never supposed to have metal to metal or uh, contact of any any sort you know we should always have a film of oil in between our parts all right guys i'm going to go ahead and shut this one down 19 minutes uh there'll be uh 
some people that aren't happy with this one, but uh, if it helps one guy make his motor right, that's all that matters.